Hi and welcome to another video from Parker Adams Boat Sales and today we're going to show you this. This is a 2011 Moody 45 DS and we're going to show you all the features and benefits this boat has to offer and believe me there's many. So let me show you around the boat and um, you'll certainly see the benefits of this purchase. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our channel um, Parker Adams Boat Sales and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for more videos and content. Thank you. So why not start at the rear of the boat? Um, as you can see, we're stern two, and there's actually a great bathing platform here. You can see we've dropped it down and it's excellent access to getting on and off the boat. Um, so there's no trouble here getting on and off. Um, but the reason I'm here is because there's actually a tender garage as well. Um, so let me show you that. Simply lift up both sides, which are on hydraulic rams. And we can drop this bit down we've actually got a massive amount of pretty much full beam space in here to fit a tender, an outboard, any toys, kayaks, paddle boards, whatever, what you want, whatever you need to put under here, there's loads and loads of room. And um, actually under here as well, um, the actual bathing platform lifts up um, manually. So we simply unclip it and then we can simply pull in um, once we've lifted this little bit of specs and then we can pull it up it's back up into place and then we can lower it down again and we can actually adjust the height position if we wanted to higher and lower and we can drop it lower into the water if you want an angle to get on and off the boat or we can have it nice and level like that brilliant and a really nice feature. If you want to close it up, simply lift that up and then pop this back down. And we're done. Really nice feature. So here's the side access. Um, and as you can see, it's a simple um, lift up and then it clips into position. Um, so when we come aboard, it has a strap that you can take off, drop it down, and simply you can step aboard. And there's one either side, so we can do this either side of the boat. So enabling very good side access as well. Another great feature to this boat. Right, well, here we are at the helm, and there's a, there's a few little features I want to show you on here. Um, first of all, it's actually, it, this has bow and stern thrusters. And the bound stern thrusters um, can be controlled at either helm, and, um, but they go up and down, so they can retract fully into the hull, and then you operate them down, and then, uh, then you can operate the bound stern thrusters. So it doesn't have any drag or reduce your speed at all when you're trying to sail. Um, so I just want to demonstrate them. So first of all, we stick um, both the bow and stern thruster on in a normal way, and then on the side here, um, we can raise and lower them. So we simply hold our finger down on the bow thruster and it'll beep. So we get the double beep and it's all the way down. And now the bow thruster will, will operate, which it is. And we can do the same on the stern thruster. And then with this one, we wait until it double beeps, and then we can operate the stern thruster. Now, while they're retracted down, you'll get this constant beep from both of them, slightly different tone, to tell you they're retracted down. So it constantly reminds you that they're actually down. So they won't stop beeping until you bring them back up again, so you don't forget. Um, simply to get them back up, you just do the reverse. Um, the stern thruster will retract automatically. The bow one, you have to hold your finger on the button. And there we have it. And now the beeping stopped and the thrusters no longer work. Um, also here, um, we actually have um, the controls for the engine. Now there's three engine controls. So single Volvo Penta D3 engine, um, and we have three, and these are fly-by-wire, so they're electronic, 
um, and we have one at this helm, one at the second helm, and one inside as well, which we'll show you in a bit. Um, and um, very easy to use, very simple, and all we do, we can activate um, each station as we want to use it. So if somebody's work going over there, um, they can't operate it until they activate it, the station, so no one can control the controls without um, dis disarming um, the other one first. Um, also though, this has um, electric witnesses, and again, very handily at the helm, um, they're just here, so the um, mains in and mains out buttons are here to actually um, retract the furling mainsail. So this does have a furling mainsail and we can make use of the um, electric winches as well. Um, and we also have um, electric winches buttons there and there's one on the other side as well. So not only does the mainsail um, is electrically operated, so are the main winches are electrically operated as well. So um, from the point of view of being at the helm, we can do a lot of it ourselves. So this is actually tailored for short-handed sailing or even single-handed sailing as well. Um, so there we are, let's carry on. Right, well, you may wonder why I'm lounging around um, on this lovely red cushion seating, um, which is, is actually very comfortable. But in fact, um, it's actually to demonstrate some more of the navigation equipment because um, this has autopilot fitted, um, but we can control the autopilot from different positions. We can control it from the chart plotter here. We can control it from the overhead instrumentation there. Um, but we can also control it wherever we are on the boat because it also comes with a remote control. And so we can leisurely be sat around on autopilot and we think, oh, actually, I want to go a few degrees um, to starboard. So I can control it from here. Or oh, actually, I want to go for a few more degrees to port. You can control it here. And of course, we can do that inside the boat, outside the boat, wherever we can, I can because we've got the remote control. A really good benefit from here. And we can always pick up some other instrumentation from here as well, um, such as your GPS position and um, speed and such like. Um, so a very useful tool to have and another benefit to this boat. Um, while we're here though, the, um, the seating is lovely, but underneath the seating, it is later teak. And also the cockpit table is here as well, which lifts up either side. So it's a double-sided table. Let me just lift that up so you can see it. And then we need to then release it to let it back down again, which is a bit of a squeeze. And we can drop it back down again. Um, and um, also here, if we take this cushion off, is some extra storage again. And inside here, there's even a ladder to get in here. So go all the way down to the bottom of the hull and it goes back to um, about here. Um, and it's absolutely vast, this space. So it goes all the way to the side, all the way to the bottom and all the way to there. And um, we've got some covers in here at the moment. There's even a ladder to get in and out of there. It's so deep, um, but it's in um, but a massive amount of storage. The current owner currently has hooks in here to hanging ropes off and cleaning equipment off as well. Um, but there's enough room in here um, for, our, for furniture, for outside deck seating, um, for fold up bicycles, whatever you want to put in here really. And in fact, the other side does have two wooden deck chairs um, and two fold up bicycles in it and it's not even half full. So um, a very good amount of space in both these side lockers. Um, another great use of storage. Okay, so the Moody 45 DS um, also has um, a full array of covers which um, go all the way around the sides. So I'm gonna show you just one side here we can show you, we can drop them down and zip them up and attach them at the bottom. Um, the covers also fit along the rail here and all the way across to here and goes around behind the wheels. And we've got another cover that obviously goes on this side. Um, so we can completely enclose the cabin because also we have a retractable sunroof. Here it is. And that closes off completely as well. So you can actually, this is now another indoor outside space for when the weather's a bit poor, or we can open it out completely and have lovely um, diner outside seating here as well. Um, so really a benefit all times of the year. Um, I really like this extra bit of seating here as well. Um, so we can sit at the helm either side 
um, and just lounge around watching the world go by. Um, very nice um, setup out here. So let me just uh, pop my cushions back. What's that? Right, I just want to show you the entrance. So of course we've seen the cockpit area. I think I called it the cabin by accident um, earlier, but it's definitely the cockpit area. Um, but we have these lovely glass stainless steel frames sliding double doors. And uh, obviously lockable, um, but they're beautifully made and um, very, very good quality, um, but very nice action and gives you a lovely wide opening into the boat itself. And because this is um, a deck saloon, of course, it's very unusual compared to most other yachts because inside you're still at the same height as the cockpit area. You don't go down any steps to get in here. Um, so it has a lovely big boat feel. And of course, a 45DS is a big boat, but it has a lovely, lovely, um, air and atmosphere in here as well because we've got big windows all the way round and it's very light and very spacious. So let's see inside, shall we? Okay, well, let's... Okay, well, let's get that door shut. And um, I've got my coat off now because it's lovely and warm in here because this has not only Webasto airblown heating, and this also has fitted air conditioning. So we've got the best of both worlds with this boat. Um, and, um, and I've only had the door shut for a few minutes and already it feels nice and warm in here. Um, so another great benefit to this boat is Webasto warm air heating as well as air conditioning. That's full air conditioning to all the cabins as well, which we'll show you um, in a bit. But let me just show you the galley area. Um, all your usual things, there's a three burner gas hob. There is a top loading fridge, um, but also a low down fridge as well, um, which does actually go into the other one, but you've got two accesses. Um, and obviously sink and, and such like, and loads of storage again, so loads of storage. Um, but also um, we can see on the floor there's a red light and um, there is red light, low lighting throughout. Um, so if we're doing nighttime sailing, um, then we won't lose our night vision when we come in to make a cup of tea, to use the facilities. So another great benefit is all this already built in low level red lighting, um, another great benefit. So, uh, so let's carry on. So across from the galley is this lovely seating area and um, it's a, a leather material. Um, not sure if it's real leather or leatherette, but um, it certainly feels genuine to me. Um, but a lovely um, L-shaped seating, and I reckon you can get five people around here for comfortably. Um, really nice space, and again, it's lovely sat here because I can just see all of the marina. And we're down here at um, Swanwick Marina on the River Hamble on the south coast of um, England. And um, at, at the moment, this time of year, it's a bit cooler than it otherwise would be. Um, so we're currently about nine or 10 degrees, um, but it's lovely and warm in this boat. Um, and um, all the windows, um, I believe they have blinds and they simply are just pull down fitted blinds to all the windows. They're actually lovely, in lovely condition. That, look, that one looks like brand new. Um, so all the side windows do that. Um, and um, for privacy for the side. And, um, and we've got little reading lights as well. And this is actually a red light so we can read navigation charts while we're at the table. Um, and this one is a red light as well. And then we can switch it to a white light. So not only is it red, it switches to white. So again, um, I'm sure this one does it as well. Yep, red to white. So we can have them as reading lights or again, not to disturb our night vision, we can read charts and things at night. Um, and plan passages on the main table. Now this main table um, does fold and we can open it out. You can see it's in beautiful condition and we can open it out to a full dinette and we can close it off again. It's lovely, I love that. It's a lovely table. And um, we've got storage um, for drinks. So it's set up for glasses and bottles underneath. Um, absolutely lovely. Um, there's another storage here, 
This is quite a nice feature. This is all the crockery and all neatly fitted. Um, and we can move these pins around to actually fit around the crockery we want to show. In fact, I'm gonna do a closer up on that. That's really nice. Let me show you that. All right, so I've not seen this before. Oh, this is brilliant. So we've got crockery. So this is just, this isn't, this isn't moody crockery, but we've got these pins. And these pins we can lift up and we can move to actually hold it in place. So we've got a glass here, we can actually move, a, take a pin out and put it next to it so it doesn't slide around. And um, so we can move all these pins into different positions to, to hold what we want to hold in here. Oh yeah, it's brilliant, I've never seen that before. And the pin, and not forgetting when this goes down, this holds all the pins in position so they don't fall out. And um, so we've got cups up one end and crockery all down here. I really like that. Never seen that before, but um, absolutely brilliant for Moody to think of something like that. Um, so adjustable crockery storage, brilliant. So another thing just to point out while we're up here is of course this. So we actually have um, demisters for the screen and there's another one on the other side as well, which we'll show you in a sec. But uh, again, a nice adjustable demister we can aim it at the screen and um, so when we are we do come in here if we wet it will demist and so we can sit here on autopilot um, enjoying the view while it's nice and cozy inside another great feature but we're not over yet let's show you another bit in here right so this is actually a inner um, navigation chart table position um, so, so the reason I haven't gone to call it a full helm position is because as you can see, there's no wheel. Um, but, um, but we can pretty much do everything from here. Um, we've got another Simrad, it's an NSE 8, it's an 8 inch screen. Um, we've got our, um, our speed and, um, and different options on here we can have up, so different depth. Um, we can follow a route on here as well. Um, we also have the controls to start and stop the engine. So we can actually start and stop the engine from this position and we can control the engine because we've actually got a, um, a control here. So we can put it in and out of gear and change the engine speed from this position. Um, but don't forget, this has autopilot. So effectively, we can steer it from here and we can either control the autopilot off of the Simrad plotter here, or we can use the remote control, which very cleverly slots into here, and this is its charging point as well. So the um, remote control um, can actually be put there and we can use the autopilot from there. So me not saying it's an inner helm position, it kind of is, um, but you wouldn't want to obviously park the boat like this. There's no thruster controls here. There's no wheel rudder control here apart from using the autopilot. So this is a position you'd use when you're out at sea. Um, but again, it's lovely, um, lovely made. And I'm assuming we've got red again. So we've got red light and white light here. Another nice feature. We've got the blinds again as well. We've got a demister on the back and we've got storage under here. And the current owner keeps things like um, laptops and keyboards here. So if they want to do use electronic charts, you can lift them out and use them. Um, he also uses this for a television when he's um, socializing. So um, it does have an aerial lead just here. Um, and um, he puts a large 32 inch TV on here um, because this directly is directly opposite the seating area. So you can watch TV and it can go up on here um, or you could put it on the galley as well. So there's definitely a position for a TV in this um, saloon area, even though there's not one specifically fitted. Um, but again, um, this actually is a nice position to be. So let's carry on um, and show you a bit more. So just quickly, I just wanted to point out that as you can see um, in the ceiling, we've got two ceiling lights and a grab rail. Um, so when we are out at sea, um, we've got a grab rail at the galley. There's also one above the saloon area and we've got opening um, skylights as well. And there is a speaker up here as well, um, just so you can see it. But we've got two more skylights on the other side and it's pretty symmetrical. So exactly the same rail and skylights on the other side. Um, so this is the port side of the boat and we've got the same on the starboard. Okay, so, well, I guess 
this is the final part of the saloon area I want to show you because this is so packed with features it's kind of you need to show you everything um, so let me move that out of the way um, so this is the controls for the Webasto heating um, very simple to use and we simply turn the temperature up and down and we can on and off or we can also use it just to blow cold air but we don't really need to use that feature on here because um, we've got air conditioning and the air conditioning for the saloon control is up here and, um, and we have different vents so this is one of the vents for the air conditioning so it will vent out of here um, and we can change the temperature and the fan speed um, and we can have it on cool or warm air um, through here um, it actually says heat on here but it doesn't have the heat option in the air conditioning unit it is just air conditioning but it shares the same control with a reverse cycle one which also heats hence why the Webasto heating is fitted um, we've also got a stereo here um, quite an old one now but it's a Kenwood CD player stereo with a USB connection on there um, but, um, um, but again there's a, quite a bit of storage I particularly like this pull out drawer with condiments in and we've got another pull out fridge and um, we've got wine bottles and things like that in here so we've got effective one fridge over there and one here as well um, and again just bits of storage and you can see the red light again as well um, underneath um, actually you know again a nice bit of storage but let's not dwell on that let's carry on right so <laughs> let me just show you um, the control panel so very simply control panel we've got 12 volt system here um, we've also got a little monitor here to tell you the state of the engine battery and the domestic battery voltage um, as well as telling you um, the levels in the fuel tanks um, we've also got a 240 section here um, which we can operate the sockets, the air conditioning, not forgetting the air conditioning um, operates on mains. Um, and we've got the mains power here um, with the mains trip switch, the mains voltage, and the switch to turn from shore power to generator power. Um, and so this has a Fisher Panda generator um, fitted as well, very lightly used. We can turn it on and off on this digital panel here. Um, and next to here as well, in addition to the generator, is actually an inverter charger. So this is the charger, so it's switched onto the charging side at the moment. Um, and we're showing we're actually on float, so it's fully charged. We can also adjust the current from the charge as well. But at a flick of a switch over to the left-hand side, um, it also switches to an inverter. So just let me show you. So we can turn, that, um, turn the mains off. And we can turn it to... Um, inverter power and as you can see that's popped up so now we're actually converting the batteries so the 12 volt batteries aboard into 240 volts and that is now powering everything up and we can see again all the sockets have come up even though the power is off on the switch because our inverter is doing it um, and then we simply can turn that back to charger um, we can see that's dropped down and if we flick that back across to mains um, in about 10 seconds it will come back on again and switch back on to shore power and the battery charge will start charging again so I love that and the other thing we've got is the generator so the generator we can turn on there and once it's on we can press start and it goes through a preheat and then it'll start itself up and again what we need to do is we turn it off turn it to generator still preheating and there it goes started straight away Here we go, and it turns itself on. So the generator is now on. And there we go, everything's powered up again. So that's your generator working, your inverter working. Perfect. Right, let me turn it down. simply at a stop of a button it's all turned off power off and then we'll go back to shore and we're back where we started
Well, coming down from the saloon, um, which is level with the cockpit area, we now go down a few steps. We go down four steps and um, we can then access the cabins. Um, the electrical distribution panel is just here, which we'll show you in a sec. Um, and then we can go to the, what we'd probably call the third cabin to my right here. And it's the smaller of the two double cabins. Um, and then to my left is the second cabin. And we have a day heads here, just down this small corridor. Um, we've got, um, and then into what we call the main cabin up the front here. And um, all of which obviously have doors, but it's a lovely little hallway here that we can completely um, can close off. You can get a nice feel for the size of it. We can have everything shut. And it just gives a nice feel through here. And it is lit down here as well. Again, all the doors are finished in a lovely um, wooden finish. And again, we've got this sort of leather um, um, inserts here. And it's on the ceiling, has got the same as well. And even there's a pole here um, for the mask fixing. And that also has um, leather around it as well. Um, so a lot of thought has gone into it, a lot of attention to detail and it does have a very nice feel about the finish on this boat. Um, but here we are, let's show you the cabins. Well, here we are in the main cabin and um, I just love this space in here. So I was quite excited to show you this. Um, it's actually just feels massive. I don't know if it's coming across in the video or not, but it is a large space and beautifully finished. I mean, even the end of the bed has got beautifully finished varnished wood with a um, like a leather inset in here. It's absolutely lovely. Um, the bed is massive as well. Um, let me take my shoes off. And um, it's a full width double. And um, as you can see lying on here, it's, um, I can obviously very easily, it's probably six five, something like that. I'm six foot tall and I've got space above and um, beyond my feet as well. Um, but what I really love about this cabin is the amount of light in here. Um, I mean, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six side windows and three skylights in here. Um, really, it's just like being outside. It's so light in here. Um, and But every window you can also close off. Um, we can have got a choice of actually um, dropping a blind very quickly, or we've got a full um, nice feature um, curtain we can put down as well. Um, and each one has these blinds. Um, the skylight itself has a full cover as well. So let me show you that. This is great. This goes... going keeps going all the way to the end look at that and also come back the other way and now look what's attached it's actually an obscure screen so we've got a mix of privacy we can have it completely open or we can close it off at night that's a brilliant feature and there's no there's, you know, there's, there's, I've counted, there's nine cupboards in this room. There's um, some hanging wardrobe space, there's loads of shelving, there's loads of storage, but there's nine cupboards in here that we can store things in. Um, as well as, there's a drawer storage under here as well. So that's in addition. Um, and we've got this, also got this lovely um, seat here as well, which we can actually fold in and out but it actually goes onto a small desk, which we'll just show you in a sec. So just quickly show you this small vanity table here. Um, it does have a drawer as well, which um, yep, pulls out like that. So we've got a nice little drawer in there, a, a nice table. There's electric here, 12 volt socket. And, um, and again, we've got lighting, which is actually the low level um, red lighting, which I've already explained is throughout the boat. Um, that we, so we can use this at night without damaging our light vision. Um, and again, um, it's just another nice little useful um, bit of space. And there's even cupboards, look, under here, 
So there's nine cupboards plus a drawer in here. So you can actually, you don't need to have any mess out at all. We can just get rid of everything into the cupboard space. Um, really nicely finished as well. Look, look, all this woodwork is lovely and it's all in really good condition. Um, and again, look, we've got this sort of leather inset inserts in here. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just it has a really nice feel in here. I really like it. Right, but this is also en suite. So let me show you the en suite now. Right, so let's show you inside the ensuite to the master cabin. Now, as we go through, you can see on the right hand side, um, there's a lovely fitted sink um, with a mirror above. And the toilet is actually an electric flush toilet. So there's an electric controls on the, on the side just next to it. Um, and this also has a full size separate shower. So the full size separate shower um, actually is easy to use because it simply just has doors that you shut across. So very easy to use. There's no curtain or anything like that. It's just a lovely separate full size shower, which is lit as well. Lots of storage space again. I can count one, two, three, four, five, six cupboards in here um, plus a drawer. So again, there's loads of room in here. Um, the skylight is just above the toilet and it also has a blind you can pull across as well. Um, this has holding tanks as well. So each toilet has its own holding tank um, and um, they, are, they aren't macerator fitted because they don't need to be. They're actually gravity toilets um, holding tanks. So when um, they're actually above the water line and all you do to release it is you just open the seacock and it will release it out. Um, and of course, if you simply close the seacock, then it holds it in the holding tank. If you open the seacock, it just releases it out. So very simple to use um, holding tanks um, and there's one for each toilet. Okay, well, just to show you, I've already showed you the one in the saloon, but again, look, here's another air conditioning unit here. And again, um, it's exactly the same as the saloon one. We can just control the temperature and the fan speed and the vents in here come out of the top here. Um, so again, we've got a um, air conditioning in here as well as all the other cabins. Each cabin's got one, um, but um, we'll show you the other cabins now anyway. So let's carry on. Okay, so the second heads um, are just to my left here. And again, we'll just show you around them. Um, it has a very similar feel. And the only main difference is this doesn't have a separate shower. It does have an inbuilt shower. So you can still has the showering option. And but as you can see, we have the sink and just to the right of the sink is actually a second shower head and a, um, a tap on the wall. And that operates the shower and it's a lift out shower. Um, so we can lift it out and operate it. Um, again, we have a toilet, but the toilet this time is a manual flush. So we only have an electric flush in the main heads and this is a manual flush toilet. Um, so in case we want to preserve our electrical power, if we're doing very long passages at sea um, and we don't want to um, have to run the generator charge the batteries and we can manually flush the toilet to not discharge any batteries. It's the only reason I can really think that, to, that it's there. Um, and again, we've got lots of um, cupboard space again and again, another skylight, but a very similar feel to the other one. Right, and here we are in one of the two other cabins. So this is a three cabin boat. And um, here we are in probably, I'd say the second cabin. The reason I say that is because this bed is very slightly larger than the other one, but not by much. Um, and as you can see, again, this is actually um, split into two. Um, but not by much. So we've kind of got it split, but not much, which seems a bit odd, but don't forget that there is a infill anyway. So we can make it into a full double um, if we want to, um, but otherwise we can slightly separate it out. Um, so, um, um, but also um, it's worth noting in here that um, as well as the main cabin, there's um, the Webasto heating outlets are in all the cabins as well. And actually this one is just fitted um, under here and I've just turned it on and warm air is coming out. Um, we have another air conditioning unit um, in here as well. And again, the controls are on the wall, exactly the same as the other one, so we don't need to show you them again. Um, but really it's just giving you an idea of the space in here. And again, I'm six foot, so uh, it does feel quite comfortable. Um, all these mattresses as well are actually um, slatted underneath. So if I lift it up, you can see they're all slatted. 
So it feels like a memory foam mattress as well um, on top of a slatted bed. So it actually is uh, very comfortable. Um, and again, we've got a couple of windows in here and the air conditioning comes out of the wall just up there and some storage on here. And again, we've got a big hanging wardrobe, um, but also there's four cupboards I can see over there as well. Small ones, but they have shelving in and there for storage as well. So again, loads of storage. Um, incidentally, um, the, the, the domestic batteries um, are laid up into a couple of banks and some of the batteries are actually under this bed and some of the batteries are under the bed in the other cabin. Um, so there is a, a, there is a big variety of batteries because we need to have extra um, power for not only the domestics, we've got obviously two thrusters, electric winches, such like. So there's a lot of capacity on this boat. Um, and whoever views the boat are welcome to um, boil it up and the mattress and you can see all the capacity that's available. Um, so let's move on to the other cabin. Well, here we are in the third cabin and as you can see um, it's still a double but it's uh, just a little smaller than the other side um, and um, and really just to show you it um, we've got another three cupboards um, but this time it's actually access to some of the electrical um, systems in here there's two normal cupboards and then access to the electrics it just gives you access to um, um, to the fuses and some of the battery management in here um, and again, there's a heating vent in here, an air conditioning unit and um, two windows and we've got lights and I didn't demonstrate any other one, but we can also turn these to red as well. Um, and uh, I think that's a nice feature, you know, it has multiple uses in the bedroom, but, uh, um, but we're going to keep it on white for now. <laughs> um, so you may be confused where I am, it's hard to explain, um, but I'm actually underneath the cockpit and um, so what we do we climb down into the engine bay which the access is in the saloon and then we go through a hole about two foot by two foot and uh, we end up in this large space and um, yeah it's, it's you know it is a large area I'm always thinking they could have utilized it better but what you can do is climb in here um, what this big box next to me is is the retractable stern thruster um, so this retracts all the way up into here um, and because we can get in here we can get good access to all the controls um, and the control panel up here. Um, we've also got access to the autopilot motor which is up on the back here um, as well as there's a lot of the um, navigational equipment instrumentation um, and um, so all the control boxes and everything like that. Um, there is a light in here as well, as we can see, we've just put on. Um, so we can light it up in here. Um, also, there's four seacocks in here, and these are all for um, cockpit drains and the deck drains to drain out under the hull. Um, also is the um, exhaust pipe, and we've got access to the water lock here. And importantly as well, there's also access just in front of me down um, between the seacocks there is the stern seals. This is a shaft driven boat and the stern seal is just fitted um, down there with a small well under it that collects any drips from the stern seal. Um, so we've got access to that as well to be able to um, see what's going on. Um, so we're just going to show you around the engine room now and, um, and fitted to this boat um, is a Volvo Penta D3 110 horsepower engine. So let's show you around it. Well, here we are in the engine room and um, I'm just looking directly at the Fisher Panda generator. And uh, we can see it's in lovely condition, um, very lightly used. Um, and I'm gonna pan round and then we're looking at the top of the Volvo Penta D3 engine. And then we can see the fuel filter and the strainer. This engine is currently winterized and you can see the winterization fluid um, in the header in the um, strainer there. Um, this is a turbocharged Volvo Penta D3. It's 110 horsepower as I previously explained but you can see the condition of it. It's a very clean and tidy engine. There's no rust or corrosion. It's lovely clean and well, well maintained. Um, the seacocks for the engine are down here and the first seacock you can see is actually for the air conditioning unit 
Um, this is the air conditioning unit. It's a Mar Mar Marix air conditioning unit. And we've got the hot water tank next to, and then we've got the Victron Energy Multi Plus charger and inverter in one. Um, this has two fuel tanks made of stainless steel. There's one fuel tank here. And if we go around, the other fuel tank is fitted just behind those pipes you can see there, and you can see the bottom of it just there. So we've got two fuel tanks and the capacity will be on the boat description. Um, but as you can see, generally, it's a nice and tidy engine room and well maintained and all the servicing is um, up to date. Okay, here we are up at the bow of the boat and there's a couple of things I want to show you here. And um, first of all though, I want to show you, we've got a, um, a, um, a self-tacking furling foresail. Um, we'll show you the self-tacking bit in a minute. Um, but also, um, the say is actually, um, I'm just looking in the book, it's 36 uh, square metres. So it's 36 square metres size sail um, for the foresail. Um, and um, the, only, the other reason we're up here really is just to show you that you can see there's no anchor. Um, but there is, and it's um, hidden away. So the anchor on this, it's, um, it's a pull-out one. So in fact, so it doesn't... Um, um, so it so it doesn't hang over the front of the boat. It doesn't get in your way when you're actually trying to do things up here um, with the furling foresail or mooring the boat. Um, and it actually is fitted under here. And it does have the option that you can leave it out if you need to. So if you feel that you feel safer with it out, um, you can certainly do that. Um, but um, if you are um, racing, sailing, and you know you, you want the space clear, um, then you can um, store it away and um, leave it in here. Um, and we've got a, a Lumar um, winch, and we've got a remote control so we can operate the winch um, from inside the locker here. Um, there's also, um, this hatch here isn't into a cabin or anything, this just shows you into the um, anchor locker where all the um, where all the chain is kept and it's actually um, stainless steel chain as well um, so it's stainless steel chain and um, it's all stored in here um, let me see if we can find out how long the chain is it's long it's a long anchor chain so here we are on the foredeck and as you can see um, these are the skylights actually from the main cabin and you can see they're slightly tinted um, but the first one as you can see is an opening one so this is one that is also an escape hatch so we can open it for ventilation but also it's an escape hatch so we can escape if we need to um, but as you can see um, above here is actually the self-tacking mechanism as well so um, as we can see it just runs along either side. Um, here we are by the mast and as you can see um, all the lines um, are here. They're all high quality non-stretch lines and um, um, mainly used for racing. Um, and um, it's a, a self-furling mainsail. Um, so it's electrically operated as well. Um, as we can see the sail though is not fitted at the moment and um, that's because there's actually a brand new sail being made. Um, now the sail is 62 square meters and as we speak there's a new one being made at the moment which will be fitted um, ready for the season. So um, all in all this boat is offers an awful lot including um, up-to-date brand new sails. Right here I am set up on the um, up on the foredeck and as you can see this is an awesome looking boat um, it's a really pretty beautiful boat with everything you can think of um, that you'd want fitted to such a thing and um, just to give you a few specs though it's um, it is 45 foot over length 13.72 meters um, it's got a 12.93 um, meter length at the waterline and it's um, 4.57 meters in beam. Um, the mast height though is 21.8 meters and she has a draft of just over two meters, so 2.04 meters. Um, and uh, and it's, in, it's in exceptional condition um, and it's a brilliant purchase um, 
and I would certainly say that whoever gets hold of this boat is, is very lucky indeed and I don't think you'll find a higher spec Moody 45 DS. So I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click like on Facebook and um, see our pictures and more videos on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. Um, thanks for watching and um, see you again soon.